Hello, everybody. And it's going to be a Freedom Friday. I'm glad I made it today. Um, I didn't make it yesterday. I just, it was impossible. We've got so much things, so many things going on. But I'm trying to do almost every day because I know there's a lot of vibes out there and a lot of energy and a lot of negative energy and a lot of beautiful energy. And right now, we're all going through so many things. And there's a lot, we have to be really careful with the holidays. There's beautiful people out there and there's some snarky people, as I call them. They they just want to give their opinion and they they don't know things, but they want to give their opinion. So you got to be careful with those opinionated people that think everything you're doing is wrong and they'll tell you how to do it right and their way is right and you're not doing this because I know it and you might have a a Santa Claus back there or something like that or a Christmas tree and I don't agree with it but you know what that's everybody's opinion and we just came through a hurricane where we basically almost died so we are celebrating Christmas this year whether anyone likes it or not and if you have an opinion about it that's okay and if you have an opinion that I am sitting in a little kitchen area and I've got things in the background and it bothers you, then you need to go work on your triggers because I live in a fifth wheel camper. <laughs> There's nowhere else I can go. I don't have a laptop. I have a major computer right here sitting in front of me. So you know what? People just try to lower the opinion thing because whether I know some people love your opinions, but not everybody welcomes a snarky opinion. So, and I don't appreciate a snarky opinion, but I let it flow out because it doesn't trigger me and it doesn't bother me. So let's get this show on the road because we have chaos and we have beauty and we have love and we have fun coming. We got some good cars. Last night when I was doing my midnight meditation, the first card that came out was the Ace of Earth. And the Ace of Earth, uh, signifies that too much emphasis may have been placed on financial reward or career goals to the detriment of others needs and responsibilities what price are you willing to pay in order to meet your goals are you motivated by genuine need by fear or by material desire these are questions you need to ask yourself now how important is material gain how fast do you wish to achieve financial security and for what purpose? The earth card represents home, family, and career, and a harmonious marriage of the three. While your life may not include all three, be sure that your opportunities to have love and family will not be limited by a path that focuses only on your need for financial securities. If you do have family, a spouse, children, or both, are you putting your desire for financial security before the emotional needs and responsibilities of a partner? And parent, will the plans you have made take you away from family and places, undue pressures on your relationship with others? If the answer is yes, or maybe the, uh, it, the ace of earth suggests that it is time to rethink your goals or weigh the potential rewards against the potential consequences. Do not act selfish at this time or the consequences may be greater than anticipated. Um, yeah, this is uh, starting anew and this is uh, watching what you do. And we do have to remember that if you are working and working and working and working and working and that is all you're doing, after a while, the money isn't all that. It, it's the people that are missing you and you not into people's lives and you taking all your time off in Workville and working for everyone. And that's not a life. With that, we've got the Eight of Pentacles, the Achievement card, and you have the ability to earn more and learn more. Whatever you focus your energy on, successful follow. You know, some people, I'm feeling a lot of success going on in these cards with people. And, you know, success is wonderful. It's amazing. We all want the success if that's what we're driving for. But we all have to be careful. Uh, when you get to the top of the ladder, who's going to be sitting with you. They're not going to wait. People don't want to wait. And if they did wait, they lost a lot of time. Uh, the card that we got with the practical magic card was a number 29, which is an 11, a master number. And it's gift of solitude. Warm my heart. 
Time alone is precious and essential in so many ways. So carve out some space for solitude, no matter how busy you are. The greatest gift you can give yourself is time alone. Yet it's usually the first thing you sacrifice and the last thing you allow. Spending time on your own connects you to your true self. It can soothe your soul and offer you deep healing. It's a powerful way to process emotions, clarify your perspective, and become more in tune with the whispers of your heart. Solitude encourages independent thinking and foster, fosters confidence in your ability to cope with challenges. It assists you in coming to terms with traumatic events and increased empathy while reducing stress. Loving and valuing time alone doesn't hinder your social skills or ability to interact with others. It can actually improve your relationship, enhance communications, and provide a new appreciation for friends and loved ones. Drawing this card indicates that you will benefit from some time alone. It reminds you to stop putting it off. No matter how busy you think you are, imploring imploring you to carve out a little time for yourself because it will assist you in so many ways and help you cope with your busyness too. You know, I need to take that advice. I have been, I just don't have time right now for myself. And I know that I need to. So I think we're all going through that Christmas stress and just be busy with life and just trying to hold everything together and going through the motions. On the physical level, the brain requires solitude to unwind, rest, and recharge. And to free up mental space, emotional, emotionally, it can be even more important and more healing. Being constantly surrounded by people and noise can drown out the yearning of your heart and silence your inner wisdom. In contrast, time on your own allows you to work out who you truly are, what you hope for, and what you really want. Without the room to explore your true feelings, you can find yourself unconsciously echoing other people's opinion, or going along with things that may not be entirely true to you. Grant yourself the solitude and the space to go within. Rather than fearing those times when you're left to your own devices and filling them with noise and to-do lists, embrace them and draw strength from the silence, lucrative in the freedom to do exactly what you want and be exactly who you want to be. Allow it to recharge and energize you. When you spend all your time with other people, it's easy to slide into patterns of acting as you imagine. They expect you to support supportive friends, loving partners, efficiency, co-workers, well-behaved child, busy parents, and putting your desires last. Start living on your own terms. Taking time out for yourself can help you remember who you are and what you want from life. Love and work and friendship, it's not about being selfish or oblivious to other people's needs, just ensuring that there is balance in how you treat yourself as well as others. There is a peace and purpose in solitude, and it can be used to achieve greater self-awareness and lead to spiritual growth and transformation. Being alone also increases pro- productivity and allows creative to fl- flourish. It's no coincidence that Solutions to problems so often occur to you in the shower or while walking alone in nature. When your brain is free to wander, most importantly, the gift of solitude helps you become more comfortable in your own skin. Develop insight into who you are deep down. Build your confidence, explore new interests, and push the boundaries of your comfort zone. I completely agree with that because sometimes when I don't have enough solitude, I get really cranky and that is a trigger moment for me that I am working on. But after a while, it's like you see this person just throwing papers up in the air and walking away. That would be me or maybe just torching it with a fire and walking away with a fire behind me because I am a fire sign and it takes a lot to push my buttons because I I love everybody and I'm a very lovable person. But when you start pushing my buttons and keep pushing my buttons, <laughs> the fire comes out. Sorry. Uh, sometimes those trigger moments have to explode. And that is one thing 
don't keep tur don't don't keep pushing my buttons because it ain't gonna be pleasant when I'm done. <laughs> I'm not gonna be lovable, Fawny D. So, um, the other one we got was the Six of Air, a time for research and investigation. Look and compare a range of options, weigh the pros and cons. Um, this symbolizes a bad habit of making comparisons in a de de devious manner that separates and creates uh, us versus them situation. When the six of air appears, it is cautioning you to be more embracing of others. Differences and warns not fall into the trap of judging others because they think or believe in a different way to you. And it comes to remind you that we are all different and that the one thing that we all have in common is just that we are all different. Every single person has beliefs totally unique to themselves, shaped by their own experience and knowledge. Don't be too quick to dis discredit what another has to offer just because their perspective and perception is different to your own. Uh, you know, I have to completely agree with that because um, I'm running into things like that. I mean, uh, people say this, this, and this, and this isn't this, and that's their opinion. So I'm getting to the point now where I'll listen to people's opinion, but I just take it as that. It is their opinion. And you know what? They may say that I'm wrong and I may say they're wrong, but who's to say we're both wrong? <laughs> we're both not wrong. I mean, we could be both wrong. The one that we got with that was the Page of Cups Imagination. And enjoy the lighter side of life. Allow yourself time to play and let your imagination run free. Um, these cards lately have been telling me that people are very busy. People have their mind going. They don't have enough solitude in their life. We're not giving, and, and I'm I'm here, I'm here with you. I feel all of it. We're not giving ourselves enough time to meditate. We're not giving ourselves enough time to relax. Um, we're getting stressed out. We have everybody giving opinions and walking away going, well, gave my opinion for the day. Well, I'm glad you gave your opinion and I'll give my opinion. But we got to be careful with the snarkiness. We've got some snarkiness going on with people being really mean about their opinion um back off we all need to back off take some deep breaths and slow down because that's not the way to be around the holidays so the last card as you can tell i've had some, a few snarkiness uh the last few days and uh I don't appreciate that much snarkiness. So we need to uh, put a leash on it almost, because it's Christmas time and we're supposed to be ho -ho -ho jolly. And if people don't believe in Christmas, that's okay with that. Um, I have questions about Christmas. I, I love the lights. I love the idea of Santa Claus. I don't know so much about that. He was cute and fuzzy and looked good on the wall, but um, I love the lights and I love the quietness of Christmas and the pretty beauty of it. So I think we should all try to mellow out, meditate, enjoy Christmas. Emotional strength, the eye of the storm. This was a perfect card to get because sometimes I feel like I am in the eye of the storm. I'm sure all of us do. And with this holiday season and everything that's happened in the last few months with me, the emotional strength is something that I really need. And I think all of us are going to need it with this holiday season. <laughs> you are stronger and more resilient than you know, braver than you think, and capable of so much more than you imagine. Yeah, we are. We, we are so much capable. I'm giggling because it has been such a stressful few days for me. It, it's just been like this roller coaster ride. And my hair is still standing up back there and it's, I'm just in free flow mode because it's just been crazy for me. And I can imagine you guys are doing, going through the same thing. It's Christmas time. Um, being emotionally strong helps you adapt to change, cope with stress and unexpected challenges and take on more responsibility when, when you need to. Emotional strength can keep you calm and centered amidst the storm of life. Best of all, it's a quality that can be learned, developed, and practiced. 
and which only increases the more you draw on it. Emotional strength doesn't always mean being loud, overpowering, and relentless, positive. Sometimes it's that tiny flickering awareness that you will pick yourself up and try again, despite feeling battered and broken by your circumstances. <laughs> Sounds like me. Seven tornadoes and a hurricane later and tarot cards and opinions and channeling and loving everybody and dreaming and doing what I'm doing. I feel it. <laughs> I really do. Nor does it mean that you're not scared of what you face. Rather, your strength emerges when you are scared, but you do it anyway. You go within, tap into your resilience and rise up like the bright strong soul you are when this card appears it indicates that you may be going through a rough patch in an area of your life facing your own personal tempest and it's time for you to stop looking outside of yourself for strength and confidence and recognize that it is already within you you have a deep well of inner power and resilience you just have to discover it and cultivate it further trust in it and yourself and that know that this storm your weathering will bring tremendous growth you may not have power over outside events but you can control how you react to them how you cope how much resilience you build and what you learn and gain from all you endure it's not essential to go through struggles and trauma to grow but bad things happen to good people all the time and difficulties can can aggravate rather than discourage you if you let them strengthening your spirit and affording you deep wisdom and coping abilities emotionally scars can be a badge of honor and celebrate of your triumph over adversities and the place where the light pours in if you're facing something you don't think you can handle right now square your shoulders take a deep breath and confront it head on the best way to become capable of something is by doing it, stretching yourself beyond that you believe possible and revealing all your potential. Your greatest strength is not in never doubting, never falling, never failing. It's in ignoring your doubts and go doing it anyway. Picking yourself back up every time you fall. Try again when you fa fail. Having the courage and the determination and the grit to keep going Understanding that even in the midst of a storm, there is a strong, calm center. The eye that you can embody and shine outward, smoothing the path ahead. Know that even its dark darkness, there is light, magic, and goodness. You can cope with this challenge. You are so much stronger than you believe, and you've had this resilience and power within you the whole time. I completely agree. And this, she is going through the storm with the beautiful seagulls around her. And she is just hugging herself like she is loving herself and protecting herself from the storm. And it's clearing out because she always had it within. Um, that's a great card because right now, um, sometimes I feel like I'm in a rubber raft and I'm doing like this down, down a waterfall. You never know. I don't know meditation sometimes gets it and sometimes it doesn't sometimes you just got to take deep breaths walk away and look like a puff daddy for a few minutes just to get the trigger moment gone but i'm working on it too guys i mean we're all working on it okay we have one more <laughs> the five of fire chaos yeah time of chaos and conflict and confrontation a battle of control and dominance yeah, this this card, I knew this this was not going to be, um, we have some chaos going on in everybody's life, and uh, not everybody, but a lot of people, and there's chaos in the world right now going on. This symbolizes a need to address a belief that your idea is unique and that nobody has ever thought of or acted on a concept prior to you. There are over 7 billion people living on this beautiful blue-green planet. And many among them may have shared similar experiences and moments that have them thinking in a very similar way. Remember, it is not the idea of that is unique, but the manner in which the idea is expressed. Your perception is unique. And if you are not simply coping, copying another, 
then the form in which you express your creativity will be unique also. Do not attack another just because they have had the same idea or are influenced by the same or similar beliefs and goals. They have just as much right to express an idea as you as you do, even if it is dissimilar to yours, your own. There is more room for everyone. Instead of worrying about what others are doing, focus on creating something of quality. Offer a high level of service. And most of all, be a visionary and express what you see in your mind's eye with skill and clarity. I completely agree with that. I mean, we all, we're all connected. So we, we all have these consciousness going on. And I know some of my friends that are in the conscious community, the, they, they have the same ideas I do because we have the same thought pattern because we're connected. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. I mean, I, I think people should go with everything and run with it. Um, I'm not asking for any money, so it doesn't matter to me. I mean, I'm, I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it to help people. Um, we got three tarot cards that came out and contemplation, the hermit was one of them. And what brought me to mind with that is the solitude card. I, I don't think a lot of us are taking the time for ourselves. Try not to resist aloneness. It gives you time for contemplation and healing to find the answers you need and know yourself more deeply. Yeah, something's telling us, and I know I need some time alone. Let me tell you that we need solitude. Here is our heart up here, the color of it. She's in black and white. And he is contemplating, and he is the hermit. And he is contemplating thought retreat. He, he needs to retreat the inner journey and uh, seclusion and protection because right now, we're, we're in this matrix going on with Christmas time and everything, but we still have our inner journey going on there. And are we ignoring it? Uh, because we got the wheel of fortune, destiny. And the wheel is not so much a doing card as a receiving card. So enjoy and appreciate the good fortune that comes to you now. Go with the flow. Um, we really need, because <laughs> we also got the lovers, the choice. Uh, Make your choice based on your long-term future rather than short-term gains. And in love, wait for the right person rather than distract yourself with flirtations. Yeah, don't jump into love. Love is... Don't jump into love. Uh, be patient with that. That one, ha you have to be patient. You need to work with it. Those were all those cards. Now, we did get some other beautiful cards. We got the Angels and Ancestors, and we have a couple of really good cards. We have the Druid, Hold the Space. Hold things together. Don't make any sudden moves or changes. Stand strong, knowing you are where you're supposed to be. The Druids were the ancient wise ones of Britain, Ireland, and France. They had a deep connection with the Earth, Sun, and Moon. They, they, the scholars who created the Agaham tree language, and they were known for their creative skills in storytelling, poetry, and craftsmanship. When the Druid card appears in a reading, you're being guided to dig deep within and hold your station. If you're wondering what to do next or have a sense of anxiety about what is unfolding in your life, it's time to shift your perception and move back to a state of trust. Don't change your plans or do anything drastic. Just trust in the process and let everything happen as it needs to be before taking any more steps. Think of a tree. It has a strong roots, yet continues to grow and bear fruit. Your life will be a reflection of this. That's a great card because there is a lot of changes I know in my life and I'm sure your life is right there too. And we have to hope that most of the changes going on are good because we have a lot of good changes going on. We've had a lot of bad changes, but we've had a lot of good changes. The other card we got was the Earth Guardian. Stay rooted and grounded. There's that rooted again. 
take time to connect deeply with the energy of the earth so that you can feel supported and make decisions based on strength and integrity. The earth guardian represents the angel of earth who brings the medicine of feeling grounded and strong. They are the pr protectors of the land and planet and can help you connect with your mission here and how can you support and evolve evolution of the planet? The earth guardian on the card is a beautiful part angel, part element who is non-binary showing that they are a divine being without a human gender. Their staff adorned with a dream catcher shows that they have the capacity to help you ground your dreams in reality. It's important for you to take a grounded approach to your current situation. If you are rushing ahead or making a decision based on your more fearful response, you will miss out on the growth you deserve. Take some time to calm down and get grounded before proceeding further. Breathe, relax, and connect with this, your center. Then consider what to do. It's important to plant seeds that are going to grow into something beautiful rather than turn into a weed you have to deal with later. Uh, that was a great card, uh, especially considering the first card we got was the Ace of Earth. So it's telling us that we, we need to get grounded. We need to take some time out for ourselves. We need to do some meditation and we need to uh, we need to do that. It's pushing us that way. Now, the two cards we got for the Soul Helper Oracle the first one we got, and this card, you know, this card's been coming out a lot, lost in the ruins of the past. Find the way to the present moment and live. And this card always reminds me of that movie, in, in Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. Um, it, this card is, and that message of that movie was very, very good. You are a traveler on the path of your soul. You will need all your courage as you are following the light of your heart into an uncertain future. However, you have now drawn this card, and it is a very important sign. You have become lost in the ruins of the past, in ruins that are the remnants of an unpleasant or difficult time. You have looked back too often instead of looking forward, at times trapped in places in the past that should have long since ceased to exert power over your life. Even if you could go back, you would find yourself alone and deserted. You would not meet anyone there. So what is it that you seek in these silent ruins that can offer you only loneliness and bitterness? They symbolize all your missed opportunities, but you cannot restore them now. They are what they are. If you linger there, you will begin to see your life as a meaningless and sad when it is really a wonderful and magical adventure. Feel the light of your heart and hear the sound of your soul. Continue on your path to discover endless possibilities, new adventures, new encounters, and even a new love. If you live tediously in the light portal of the present, your eyes firmly fixed on the future, you will be on the path of your soul. Leave your past behind and find your way back to the present. It is now important to forgive yourself and continue your journey and your gaze fixed firmly ahead your helpers for the next 21 days the power animal of the mouse the herbal essence is lemon the healing crystal is black opal and the number is nine let me read the nine the number nine reveals that you have something new to learn be open receptive and curious enough to seek it out you will then find wisdom and an unconditional deep healing love number nine will help you reach a point of completion so that you can turn your attention to the mystery of the unknown and the new its energy felt field is indestructible without being inflexible number nine always remains true to itself nine plus nine equals 18 whose digit adds up to nine nine times nine is 81 whose digits add up to nine multiply any number by nine then add the two digits of the resulting number, and they will always add up to nine. It is almost as if it has absorbed every other number through the, its calculations. Number nine teaches you how to do this. 
to accept the powers offered to you in order to achieve perfection. This number is fulfillment and completion, but also a beginning and an end. Uh, yeah, this card, if you look at it, they're lonely corridors. It, they're all alone. There's no one there. Um, if you've ever seen the movie In Dreams May Come, In Dreams May Come with Robin Williams, this card always reminds me of that movie. Um, his wife was left behind. They all, her, her two kids, the dog, the family died. They passed away. She was in a home. She was in like a kind of schizophrenic because she tried to kill herself so many times. He was in heaven waiting for her and she never came. And she ended up killing herself and going into this place right here. And she was so sad hanging on to him when he wasn't even still there. She was just in this dark place in inner world and he had to go rescue her. And they told him that when he went there, that if he couldn't change her mind, she would have to be there in her own misery forever. And she didn't recognize him. And she was so lost and so sad from everything that happened. And she thought this was her home where they were. And it was like wet and spooky and just like this place. And he said, okay, he said, I'll stay with you. And he, his face just started, the happiness just started to fade away. And she realized right then, no, no, don't, you know, but I'm not going to tell you the rest of the movie, but this card really reminds me of her being lost in the past, looking back, but think about it. They weren't there. They weren't there anymore. She was lost in that past, reliving that and thinking about it. And they were waiting for her in the future. And if she would have had that beautiful future that she would have was supposed to, she would have ended up in heaven with them. So it, it's, it's very, it's a very heavy card. And I know Christmas time, we all think about the past a lot. Now this card to come out is a number 16, which is a seven. To conform is to die inside. Be brave and be yourself. She's got her little chameleon and basically she doesn't want to conform, you know, just like the, the chameleon doesn't want to conform. Conforming can be a positive in certain situations. For example, when someone conforms out of politeness, this card has a warning for you. However, to live means to bravely follow your own path. Following the path of others means in a sense, dying, withering inside. You merely exist on the path of others, but you cannot live. You will find the light of your own life only on your own soul path. Recognize and acknowledge your lies and errors. It is a mistake to believe that you can please everyone and follow their wishes. It is important that you be don't be dazzled by the bright kaleidoscope of colors of those who rob you of your strength and your light and you have lost yourself in them. You have conformed as a chameleon would, and you are making their opinions your own. It is time to realize this and learn how to say no. It is time to have only your own colors in your life, to feel only your own happiness, to let your own light shine, inner life or inner death. Which do you want and who are you? It is now time to rebel, to start a revolution, free yourself from your lower negative energies and decide who you want to be. The moment has also come to share with this with the world and those around you. Do not hesitate any longer. Your soul is speaking to you. Listen to your heart and your feelings. Listen to your own truth. Your soul, helper, uh, soul helpers for the next 21 days, the power animals, the tiger, the herbal essences, the tea tree oil. The healing crystal is the white agate, the peace agate, and the number is seven. Seven indicates that you should only trust the magic of your heart. You will be given the gift of light that makes a deeper connection between you and the mysteries of your life. Over the next few days, fill your soul path with love even more than usual. Love every moment, love everything and everyone. 
and you will become the magic of your heart. The energy field of the number seven is like a gateway of light. It is death, birth, magic, life, and the contemplation of a stage in life. Number seven brings new soul paths. Yeah, I think we should go on a journey into a new soul path. Why not? I know we're making new things. We're doing all kinds of new things. We're not staying in the stagnant world that we were once. Now, the card that we got with the Gateway of Light activation was the Halls of Learning, Spirit Guides, Confirmation, and Great Lessons. That's what we've been on, Great Lessons. The Halls of Learning, also sometimes known as the Great Halls, are an etheric retreat dedicated to spiritual knowledge. They are a training space for all souls, including those on Earth. Spiritual guides and those between lives, they have been visited by many spiritual seekers, seers, mediums over the years and have been described as a giant, somewhat gothic university building with marble flooring, spiral staircases, and tall bookcases. Some have said these halls are home to the Akashic Records. While others have wondered if they are connected to the Halls of Minetti, I can confirm that these are actually two different retreats. Ultimately, this etheric retreat is an ancient mystery school, and it is particularly powerful for those who are opening up their psychic and clairvoyant abilities. If this gateway comes to you often, it brings confirmation that your psychic gifts and strengthening also. If the idea of an ancient mystery school in the astral realm seems familiar, there's a good chance that you've been here during dream time or even between incarnations. These great halls are held within the heart of source and are a projection of a divine mind's infinite intelligence. When we visit them, we are connecting directly with the wisdom of source. You are on the path to great learning. Spiritual beings are drawing close to support you. If you are facing challenging or difficult circumstances, or have just moved through such a time, you are being called to review what you have learned about yourself. If you are still feeling overwhelmed by a certain event or asking why it happened, call on source and your guides to reveal to you the pattern, trauma, or wound that has contributed to this challenge. If you aren't experiencing challenging energy, the reason is that you've made huge progress on your spiritual journey. So much so that your perceptive has sh shifted so that you can view every challenge as a window of opportunity. The halls of learning gateway indicate that your spiritual gifts are developing at this time. I think a lot of us, our spiritual gifts are developing at this time. We are really picking in an overdrive, a lot of us, because we realize that time is valuable and we have to get it going on. Um, we got two cards from the Divine Master. We got the Rama and Sita, Holy Union, Soulmate Connection, and Romantic Opportunity. Um, there's some romance going on here. The last couple of readings we got, we got some sexual romance going on. So, Okay, Rama and Sita are Hindu personifications of the Divine Masculine and Feminine and are associated with the Festival of Lights. Diwali embodiments of divine love and holy union. This magical couple can be invoked for help with overcoming challenges in relationships and can help those who are ready to open their hearts to love. Ooh, I think maybe some Christmas love going on out there. Rama and Sita are the center figures in the Indian epic of Ramayan. In short, the story is that Rama and Siddha were royal rulers and a great demon lured Siddha away by impersonating a wounded animal and an injured beggar in the forest. As Siddha had great compassion, she fell, fell into the trap and was stolen away from her one true love. On his quest to find her, Rama led an army of monkey warriors, including its leader, Hanuman into a battle between good and evil. They prevailed and the royal couple were united once more. Their coming together is still celebrated today. You have a great opportunity to experience heart healing at this time. In the past, you may have found it difficult to trust and let yourself be loved and therefore 
have many barriers up that stop others from seeing your true worth. Now you find yourself in an empowered position where you are open to the possibilities of partnership. This is very exciting. You know for a fact that you don't need anyone else to validate you or complete you. But this doesn't mean that it wouldn't be nice to be cherished and supported. If you aren't in a relationship, the universe is pre pre presenting opportunities for you to experience a real soul-to-soul -soul connection. This can only happen, though, if you stop letting past experiences cloud your judgment in the present. If you are already in a relationship, know that there is an opportunity to take it further at this time. Either way, enjoy the experience. That is a nice card. Now we did get Paul, the Venetian gifted one, revealed hidden talents and opportunities to shine. We've got him a another time. Paul, the Venetian is one of the original masters from the Theosoph Theosophic political <laughs> these words I'm telling you, I am not a scholar of words at all, period. Um, ascended master teaching and a guardian of the rose pink ray of the heart. He's He's got the heart, the rose, the pink rose right near his heart. It is said that he is the ascended form of Paolo Venisi, a famous artist of the Italian Renaissance. He had links with Venice, and when he was ready to pass, in 1588, had the opportunity to ascend to help humanity as a spiritual guide. As he was a highly talented painter during the earthly incarnation, he is, he is now dedicated to helping those with creative talents tie them into their spiritual practice and live a spiritual life. If you call on him, he can help you use your creativity as a way of connecting to your higher power. When he comes to you, he brings the energy of grace to help you reveal the deeper parts of yourself to the world. There is a chance that for a long time you have felt misunderstood or like an outsider, probably because somewhere along the way you were discouraged from shining because someone else projected their fears onto you. But hidden, hidden deep within, you have gifts that can help heal the world and not only that can help heal you. When this card comes to you, it's time to drop the shield that have protected your heart because you aren't going to be hurt anymore. You are being given the opportunity to shine. Know that the inspiration that's streaming through you is divinely guided energy that can help you be the most authentic and aligned version of yourself. So reveal your talents. Let others see your abilities. Gifts aren't gifts unless they are shared. Share your gifts and serve. Knowing you are being served in return. Wow, that was a great reading for Freedom Friday. And I just want to say that I hope everybody is enjoying this Christmas season. I'm not going to say holiday because I think it's Christmas and it should be Christmas. We don't have to change the word just because it, it doesn't please anybody. We need to relook at the things we're doing and the things we're changing about our life and there was traditions in our family that people do want to keep and they should keep them because if traditions completely fade away then we erase the history of our ancestors and we don't want to do that but we don't want to keep just those going on we want our own history too so we have to incorporate our uh, history that we want to um, share and and go on into the old traditions of our ancestors. So I think that will help everybody think about the old traditions because we do want to release some. I mean, we don't want to hang on to everything. If we don't like certain traditions just because Grammy and Grandpa did it and not this and that, we don't like it, don't do it. But if you love those traditions and you really, really like those traditions, you can do them. Um, it's your choice. We all have choices. And we should make the right choices this holiday and be loving and happy 
and a little less trigger moments. Work on the triggers because, boy, I'm working on mine. Trust me. I have some trigger things going on lately, but uh, I'm controlling. I'm doing okay with them. And I'm really, really tired. So I am going to go because I got to cook dinner now and do some things. And um, I just want to say that I love you all so much. And may every step in your journey be magical. And you know what? Just be you. <laughs>